Uh, Stephen Cochran, I work for uh, Allied Irish Bank. Um, I think the bigger banks are maybe being dismissed a little bit too quickly here, and I think the bigger banks have a really uh, important role to play. OK, they have this legacy cost model, but actually they've got a big opportunity if there was a bit more focus on, instead of everybody trying to do everything, you know, a bit more focus on certain banks doing certain things and doing them really well. If I'm defending banks here, and the bit that I, that, that I do defend is that the business about uh, banks having appetite to lend, there is a big confusion about what's debt funding and equity funding, you know. And I think, you know, if, if there's proper SME funding, you might see those different levels of mezzanine funding, equity funding and debt funding. But in that kind of silo that was specialised in that, rather than kind of broad brush across everything. Can I, I think that's a really interesting point. I, I do um, and have done a lot of research on, um, on efficiency modelling, um, which takes all the banks and you can model them throughout time. And always the, the most efficient banks that dominate the other banks are the small focused banks. So in the 80s, it was the TSBs. And then funnily enough, when Abbey came into the market in 89, and, and the, and the smallish at the, at the end of the 1980s, Scottish banks. When you do it now, those have all expanded and they're massively dominated by the, the smaller, more focused uh, banks. And you can see that in, the, in, in the, the econometric models that you actually run. So it makes complete sense, but what actually happens is that they get small they start to grow and then they go into areas which they don't fully understand and then they get because they get tugged into those markets and then they become less efficient and they perform less well or you get to that situation where you have banks like the Silicon Valley Bank who completely understand uh, uh, supporting uh, digital companies and supporting high-tech companies as far as growth country has been been very successful in California now they're in tech city I would be worried and and, and then so 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 we also have interest coming in who know what they're doing and, and who, are, who are based abroad. Omar? Thin sliced or? Maybe. I guess there is no one model that, that works over another and the financial crisis has shown that. We had monoline banks that exploded, we had universal banks that exploded. So I think trying to prescribe models um, is, is fraught with danger. Yes, uh, institutions, and this goes back to a 101 strategy, you should pick where they can be best, where they have a differential advantage, a competitive advantage. Of the newer entrants, we're beginning to see that. People are making bets. Yeah. Anybody want to add any more? To yeah, yeah, I, th I think um, our members' reaction would probably be um, that they believe the banks are now too system focused. They spent probably a couple of decades commoditizing uh, their products. Uh, it's became, you know, a tick box exercise, you know, the, all the old cliches, cliches of computer says no and all that sort of thing. Um, and um, I don't know how you change that culture. They, they, they absolutely have the ability to, to make the significant step change to funding growth um, for the UK. I just don't know whether they've got the competitive desire uh, without one of them um, making a move in the marketplace or the cultural ability to make that sort of change. Hi, uh, my name's Graham Andrew. Uh, I was in banking for 26 years and then came out at the, uh, at the end of last year. I worked for a smaller bank. But actually my question is more around, uh, we've talked about lending, growth and one side of the customer base of the banks. Is anyone asking what the depositors want? The UK still got a lot of cash kicking around despite you know, what capital elements are, and particularly in, we're in a large city where there's lots and lots of money, but a lot of it goes back out again into investments that are worldwide, uh, you know, have a portfolio approach. So maybe for depositors, you need to be a bit more transparent about where the bank's lending book's going to be, and then you can build in things like tax breaks, or you, know, you don't pay tax on a certain type of deposit account. We were talking about innovation. I think there needs to be more thinking around that type of thing and, and go back to the depositor. It's their money, despite the banks maybe having 5 or 10% capital. The bulk of it is everyone's money in here. And I think the question needs to be asked, what do you want to do with it? Okay. Folks, very quickly on that. Well, that's, so reputation. That's, that's just the way reputation comes in. is very important for a bank. And that's why you know, see some of the new, uh, you know, new banks like uh, uh, Funding Circle, etc., because people are there to see a change and, and they are willing to be part of, uh, you know, trying something new and uh, the reputation is kind of uh, that the banks 
very innovative and that experimental and that, that that's maybe what people like. <laughs> Anybody else want to yeah, touch? There it? are um, banks where you can you can turn up with and, and get advice, and you, they'll map your um, risk appetite, and then they'll they'll sell you stuff. Um, the only problem has been over the last ten years is that they tend to map your risk appetite and then ignore it. And uh, there's a couple of banks that have then been fined, you know, thirteen, fifteen, twenty million pounds because they've found that they've they've sold all the wrong products to the to the wrong people who they've they've actually modelled their risk then just said, well, well, we'll sell you this anyway because it makes more money for us. So there are those banks, uh, I think Credit Lyonnais is, is one, and there's, there are others that you can do that. Um. I was just going to chip in to say that I absolutely agree that the d deposits are the lifeblood of banking. You know, it is the, the meat and drink of, of, of being able to, uh, you know, provide facilities out in the whole intermediation model. And I also agree about transparency, of course, your depositor should have transparency in terms of the business model. Um, so I, I, I agree with your, your point, but I do think the, the ironic thing is that de deposits are not valued to the same extent as they should be uh, in the current environment.